Watch this. Turnkey, one time. No engine light. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so I got all the spark plugs, put it back together, the coil, plug in, everything. I got the intake connector to the master airflow sensor. The coolant is not, but we're just gonna let it start. This thing, let it idle. Intercooler, doesn't matter, as long as we got air coming in here, going to the engine. Turbo is open, same thing on this side, turbo is open. We're not gonna uh, hit boost anyway, so we're just gonna let it idle. And check this out, guys. You won't believe what just happened. All right, put the key on. Watch this. Turn key one time. Just one. It's more responsive now. So if I uh, touch the, the gas, this boost gauge in here is broken. It's not staying. It's not connected to the hose anyway, so don't worry about that boost gauge. It's more responsive now. So let's uh, put everything back together and uh, let's go start the engine again and let's see how this thing works and I can explain what happened and what did I do to make this thing work boom right there it's all installed guys inner cooler is installed piping hoses connected to the turbos everything the only thing that is not installed properly is this uh, reservoir coolant tank right here and then the air intake box is just kind of laying down there, but the connector for the mass airflow is connected. No worries about that. We'll uh, give this thing a, a good crank and it's, uh, let's see if it idles or not. Let's go. All right, there we go. Let's get our scan tool ready. All right, prime is good. We got fuel prime. I'm just gonna quickly set this up. Got no engine light, so that's good. That's a good sign. Okay, let's uh, 
actually detect no codes, so that's good. Let's see at this pair of parameters. See, same thing here. Uh, correctional negative 21. I had this running yesterday, negative 23. So it's still the same. See, when I press the gas, when I blip the gas a little bit, it stalls. When I press the gas, uh, I have to easy on gas so that it will keep it running. So. Long crank again. Long crank. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. JDM EJ20 right here. EJ20. Uh, previous video diagnosed uh, spark plug, the sparks, uh, fuel injectors, there's fuel, the cylinder balance test. Uh, unplug the one coil connector and see if there's any hesitation on the idle and it did on number one same thing on the number three cylinder so those uh coil and spark plug are functioning right I had a little conversation with the mechanic at my work he's a mercedes bmw lexus subaru specialist and uh, he said it's a pretty common on those uh subarus especially the early 20s with the engine lights on uh, related on fuel and air mixture and it's not giving you the O2 sensor code it just gives me the rich condition on bank one right there on this EJ20 there's only two O2 sensors the upstreams and the downstreams okay upstream is right here and then the downstreams is after the Y pipe so these uh, JDM here, uh, we got the EJ26, the 6 right there. Uh, the 7 is the SDI, the code, engine code is 7, but this is a 6. So this is just like a WRX engine, but with a twin turbo right there. Correction here on my previous uh, diagnosis in my previous video, um, when I touched the turbo on this side it's cold and then on the left side it's hot it's because this is the primary turbo this will spool up right away on a low rpm and when it gets to like a 4000 4500 rpm this will kicks in after so it's a sequential turbo this one in first low end and when you get the high rpm this will kicks in as well the bigger turbo so that's why this is cold when it was idling and this is hot when it was idling misdiagnosed on that one so check on that video uh, i did a little bit of mistake i can't change that video anymore it's been uploaded on the previous videos but on this chaos here we're gonna put everything back together uh put the coolant in on this video we're gonna be installing the o2 sensor uh, we can do a test on this. You can see there's two black wire on the top and then white on the left and blue on the right. So I got this uh, diagram right here. Uh, front O2 sensor right here. You can see my color is way different. Black, white, white, and yellow, red. Uh, this is the Subaru Impreza WRX O2 2 liter. Uh, that's the only information I got so it's gonna be tough to read this uh, four wire O2 sensor all I know is uh, there, there's a heater in here there's a signal and there's a ground let's do a quick reading on this uh, O2 sensors on this heater uh, this will be the, the two black right here the two black wire so let's go to ohms uh, on ohms is a uh, point zero one five I believe uh, those are the range on ohms on this uh, heater circuit so just uh, tap it in and you can see 0.001 see it's way below it's supposed to be 0 0.015 it's not even it's not even on the spec so there you go that's one example this is dead O2 sensor we're gonna put a new one in okay so here is the socket for O2 sensor 7 8 right there and then here's the 
O2 sensor I got NTK same thing as the NGK okay, here's the part number Subaru O2 sensor is like 500 bucks that's ridiculous especially the upstream one uh, this is aftermarket this is probably about 300 bucks on the aftermarket all right there you go O2 sensor double check make sure it's the right one comes with two zip tie the connector yeah there you go guys it looks the same WRX on this one 03 or 04 same thing all right let's uh take out the old one here you can see that uh, I cranked the wheel all the way to the left and then I spray some penetrating fluid on this upstream sensor already it's been sitting there for about 20 minutes all right so let's quickly take this thing out and then we'll put a brand new one in wow. that thing is tight Alright guys, so I had to break that O2 sensor in half right there. There's the other half so I could put a regular socket in there. Because that O2 sensor socket I got is just slipping. It's so tight in there. So break that in half, put a socket in, a regular one. And then we'll just use the impact to take it out. There you go. There you go, look at that. That's the old one. And compare it to the new one. Same distance, same length. Perfect. All right, let's install that new one in. All right, here's the new one. Fish it up from the front on the top here. So it's easy to uh, connect that wire when you're in the bottom. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Here's the new one. There's a uh, anti-seize on here already. We're just gonna we're just gonna quickly clean up that hole. I'm just gonna use the wire brush on that hole to so clean it up a little bit. And then you're just gonna put the O2 sensor socket in, just like that. All right, guys. There we go. Nice and snug. That's it. All right guys, so here's the O2 sensor connector and we're gonna connect it to the engine harness. Connector right there, it's just behind the battery. It's gonna be hard with one hand here. So it's gonna quickly off camera. What be the best is to take out this battery so it's not on the way. But there we go, I made it click. That's good. It's secured in there, we're gonna use a zip tie on those wires but let's uh quickly start the engine here and we'll look at the scan tool and see what kind of result we can get on those o2 sensors Keep the engine warm a little bit. The coolant is uh, not connected yet. We're just gonna let this thing run a little bit. You can see it's a little shaky, but not much. Brand new O2 sensor in there.
so that's a good sign. All right, here we go. Do the correction still. Learn zero. There we go. Air fuel ratio 29 ohms. Not bad. 5.5%. That's like that's pretty good. Looks good to me, guys. So this is the fix. Respond really quick. Alright, that's it. This is the fix. P0172. All you need is just a brand new O2 sensor. The old one is lazy, it's not working properly. That's it guys. Subscribe. I'll see you again on the next one. Peace. So next video on this one, we're gonna be uh, changing the valve cover gasket on both sides. I got the part here ready. So we're gonna be uh, taking a bunch of stuff right here out. Same thing on this side, we'll be taking it out and uh, we'll replace it. That's it.